Hi everybody and welcome to Teen Book Tuesday. My name is Lori and I'm the teen librarian at Manlius Library and today I've got a bunch of brand new books in the teen room that I'm here to tell you about. The first one is called Misfit in Love by S.K. Ali. And there's the cover. And this brings back Jana Yusuf from Saints and Misfits and she's also the same author as um, Love from A to Z. Jana Yusuf is so excited for the weekend. Her brother Muhammad is getting married, and she's reuniting with her mom, who she's missed for the whole summer. And Nuwa is arriving for the weekend, too. Sweet, constant Nuwa. The last time she saw him, Jana wasn't ready to reciprocate his feelings for her. But things are different now. She's finished with high school, she's ready for college, and she's ready for Nuwa. It's time for Jana's carefully planned summer of love to begin starting right at her brother's wedding. But it wouldn't be a wedding if things didn't go, if things went according to plan. Muhammad's party choices aren't in line with his fiance's taste at all. Da Jenna's dad is acting strange and her mom is spending more time with an old friend and maybe a love interest than with Jenna. And Nua is treating her differently. Just when things couldn't get more complicated, two newcomers, the dreamy Haytham and brooding Laith have Jana more confused than ever about what her misfit heart really wants. Jana's summer of love is turning out to be super crowded and painfully unpredictable. Jana is a wonderful character. If you've read her in Saints and Misfits, you know she'll be great in Misfit in Love. And if you haven't, you can pick right up with this one and then go back to Misfits in Love or vice versa. So that's Misfits in Love by S.K. Ali. Next, Tokyo Ever After. This is um, actually picked by Reese Witherspoon for Reese's YA Book Club. And the author is Amiko Jean. And there's the cover. Izumi Tanaka has never really fit in. It's not easy being Japanese American in her small, mostly white Northern California town. Raised by a single mother, Izumi, or Izzy, because it's easier this way, has always felt it's been her and her mom against the world. But then Izumi discovers a clue to her previously unknown father's identity. And he's none other than the crown prince of Japan, which means outspoken, irreverent Izzy is literally a princess. In a whirlwind, Izumi travels to Japan to meet the father she never knew and discover the country she's always dreamed of. But being a princess isn't all ball gowns and tiaras. There are conniving cousins, a hungry press, a scowling but handsome bodyguard who just might be her soulmate, and thousands of years of traditions and customs to learn practically overnight. Izumi soon, find her, soon finds herself caught between worlds and between versions of herself. Back home, she was never American enough, and in Japan, she must prove she's Japanese enough to be a princess. Will Izumi crumble under the weight of the crown, or will she live out her fairy tale happily ever after? You'll have to read it to find out. It's called Tokyo Ever After by Emiko Jean, and it's a wonderful, fun, frivolous, and yet serious summer read. Okay, something completely different. This is fantasy. It's called Grace and Glory by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And this is part of the Harbinger trilogy. So if you've, um, if you've read the others, Storm and Fury, and the name of the first one escapes me. Uh, Storm and Fury and Rage and Ruin. This is the third one. Uh, Jennifer Armitrout is also the, the author of the Dark Elements books and standalone titles, Problems with Forever and If There's No Tomorrow. So that's Grace and Glory. And it's Trinity Morrow has lost the battle and her beloved protector. Even with both demons and wardens on her side, Trin may not win the war against the Harbinger. I don't want to read any more on the inside because it will give away some stuff that happens in the first two books. I highly recommend the series. It's very, very good action fantasy. Strong female characters as well. And a bit of romance. Okay. What beauty there is. 
and it's a gorgeous cover. And it's new, but it might actually be the antithesis of a summer read because it takes place in the deep, dark winter. To understand the truth, you have to start at the beginning. Winter in Idaho. The sky is dark. It is cold enough to crack bones. Living in harsh poverty, Jack Dahl is holding his breath. He and his younger brother have nothing except each other. And now Jack faces a stark choice. Either lose his brother to foster care or find the drug money that sent his father to prison. He chooses to find the money. Ava Bardem lives in, uh, lives in isolation, a life of silence. For 17 years, her father, a merciless man, has controlled her fate. He has taught her to love no one. Now he is stalking the same money Jack is. When he picks up on Jack's trail, Ava must make her own wrenching choice. Remain silent or speak and help the brothers survive. Choices, they come at a price. This is action and survival and adventure and drama and suspense. It's beautiful and it, the characters are fabulous. It's called What Beauty There Is by Corey Anderson. And if you're looking for something to cool you off on a hot summer day, a book full of snow just might do it. All right. This one is called Spells Trouble or Spells Trouble, and it's The Sisters of Salem. And I'm hoping this is going to be a whole series. And instead of reading the inside cover, I'm going to actually read you an excerpt that is um, on the back because it's super fun. Uh, the authors of this are P PC Cast and Kristen Cast. Mercy opened her eyes. Hunter sat beside her. Beside Abigail, Zena had turned to face the tree as well. The huge cat's back was fully arched and her tufted ears flattened against her skull as she continued to growl mercilessly, menacingly. The thick trunk of the mighty tree dripped with something disgusting, black and foul and thick. A snout pushed through the darkness and took form, melted wax becoming solid as it entered this world. Red eyes broke through the shuddering bark. The thing was huge, all sinew, matted fur, and claws. Its breath came in rapid pants as it pulled its body through the corrupted center of the tree. The fetid stench of it had reached Mercy, thick with sulfur and rot. Mercy tasted bile as she gagged in revulsion and fear. The creature looked directly at them and snarled, gnashing long, pointed teeth. And that's the Sisters of Salem. Spells trouble. And finally, Perfectly Parvin. Fourteen-year-old Parvin Mohammedi has just been dumped. Apparently, cackling, Cheeto-eating, frizzy-haired jokester Parvin is just too much. Whatever that means. But as she considers her now ex's new blonde-haired, perfectly poised girlfriend, Parvin wonders if he who shall not be named wasn't right. Though heartbroken and humiliated, Parvin is nothing if not a girl with a plan. Change everything about herself and get a new boyfriend, stat. After a night of observing the women on her favorite rom-com movies, Parvin thinks she finally understands how to get and keep the guy. Now she just needs a guy to get and keep. Enter sophomore heartthrob Maddie Fumero, who is looking more and more like the smoking hot cure to all her boy problems. If Parvin can get Maddie to ask her to homecoming, she's positive it will prove to herself and to her ex that she's girlfriend material after all. There's just one problem. Turns out being a rom-com heroine is a lot harder than it looks. This sparkling debut is as hilarious as it is heartfelt. A delightful tale where, amid the turmoil of high school, friendships and crushes, being yourself is always the perfect way to be. And that is Perfectly Parvin by Olivia Abtadi.
what successful leading ladies have in common. They don't cackle. They giggle and cover their mouths with their hands. None of them eat hot Cheetos. They are somehow completely hairless from the eyelashes down. Instead of blurting out what they're thinking, they wait until the guy in the movie asks, what are you thinking? They smile 80% of the time, 80% of the time, instead of talking. All the men in the movie lead the conversation. Hmm, key observation. How to be less loud. Talk at a minimum around people you have to impress. Maybe limit to two comments each interaction just to be safe. No more crazy outfits or garish makeup looks. Same for my wild hair and body hair. Don't snort or cackle, even if it's really funny. Keep Cheeto consumption limited to emergencies. Instead of replying to questions, smile, but in a mysterious and alluring way. Stop gasping so much. That's tough, but necessary. No more pranks. Full stop. Gotta be honest, how to be less loud sounds a lot like how to not be yourself. This is a great book about being who you are. So there you go. Six brand new books in the teen room just in time for summer reading, which has begun. You can sign up over at our website, manliestlibrary.org. Just click on the summer reading tab. Uh, we also have registration for different programs open up now. You can find those also on our website. Click on the calendar. Thanks for joining me today. Again, my name is Lori, and I'm the teen librarian at Manliest Library. You can find me here every Tuesday throughout the whole summer at 2.30 for more um, new book revelations in the teen room and maybe some book YA book news, too. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Happy reading.